All right, stick around because the, on the show today is Laura Cox, a guitar virtuoso and YouTube sensation. She's got a half a million followers on YouTube, uh, and she's also started her own band, and they have two albums out now with a third one on the way. The latest single is called One Big Mess. It's out now, and she's going to tell me all about recording the new album, her start with music and YouTube, playing live, doing covers, songwriting, and much, much more. Stay right there. Yeah, so welcome to the show, Laura Cox. This is exciting. Uh, I just found out about you from the press release, and I went and checked out the YouTube channel. I was like, I got to get this girl on. She's amazing. So uh, Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, 500,000 subscribers. That's How long did it take you to get there? I'm at like uh, 1,500, so I got a ways to go. Uh. I I don't I didn't really keep track of this uh, because I started years ago maybe around 2000 and I'm not sure 2006 2008. or 2008 yeah that's what I read and online so, <laughs> yeah yeah I, I didn't keep track about uh, of this but uh, yeah it's a uh, it's always a surprise you know when I'm checking the the numbers and uh, and uh, yeah uh, I think uh, it's not. Uh, I'm really proud about this, but for me, playing guitar on stage in a live project and releasing album is uh, is more important than just the numbers of uh, followers on YouTube, you know, but yeah, I'm sure. really proud of this. That helped you get there though, right? Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think having a, a bigger YouTube channel and starting early uh, on YouTube helped me achieve what I have now with the, the labels and the albums and the touring. And so I'm very grateful for this. That's awesome. So now you you are you were born in France. Do you live in France, or you you raised in France, or where did you grow up? Yeah, yeah. I, I was born. So my dad is English, my mom is French, but I've always lived in French. France. I was born in France, so I'm French. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I I've never been there, but I really want to go. I want to see the catacombs. Like, what else uh, should yeah. I should I do if I visit there? Like, besides obviously the Eiffel Tower and all the predictable stuff. What other things should I see if I go to France? Oh. It depends if you're if you're going to Paris or not because Paris is not my favorite city. For me, it's a, I, I'm not a big fan of a, really? of, a, of big cities because it's so, so crowded, so stressful. I don't like it's that really, either. It's, it's beautiful. It's a, don't yeah. get me wrong. It's beautiful, but I prefer the countryside. So for me, the the most beautiful part of France it's like a, the southwest Pays Basque, you know, Basque country where you have the the west coast with the surf <laughs> and and a, a bit above bordeaux when if you like wine you know you can visit the the vineyards and uh, it's really 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 nice uh, for me the west part of france is really uh, like uh, more wild and uh, but paris is really nice you know the architecture and the churches and uh, yeah if you if you like all the buildings paris is a is a really really nice town yeah, I love the history. I think that's so cool. Yeah. But you're, I'm like you. I don't like big cities, so that's kind of interesting. Is there? There's probably history in the small towns too, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure. I, I'm not a, a really, really a, a pro in the history of France, but uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I think if you like good food and good wine, France is a uh, is perfect to 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 visit and to uh, to go to uh, you know tastings and uh, it's uh, it's really cool. Yeah. So is all the food good? Or is there like a place that you'd recommend, like uh, something like I need to eat or a restaurant mm -hmm. I need to go to? Uh, it's hard to know because I'm vegetarian and in France, oh. they eat a lot of meat. <laughs> so, oh, I thought they so, had a lot of uh, like bakeries and stuff and croissants. Yes. Yeah, 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 for sure. This is uh, the nice boulangerie. You know, you have a nice uh, boulangerie everywhere, the bakeries. And uh, this is but this is not something... Uh, uh, extraordinary for us but I think for people who are coming from outside of France this is uh, something special but we have this every morning and it uh, yeah that's uh, like uh, the French uh, you know bread like the baguette that's yeah. perfect with a bit of butter in the morning it's, uh, it's all so good so oh, that yeah, sounds you can amazing. find this easily everywhere uh, in Paris yeah. I need to make a trip now so what, <laughs> what is the thing with the French people they don't like Americans or like, how do we fix no. that should I, should I just wear a Canadian flag when I go yeah. like what no 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 I, at least I don't have anything against American people but uh no no I I think that the French people are, are just a seen as a grumpy you know like complaining <laughs> about a lot of things really and yes <laughs> I right. think so. I think it's a one of the uh, yeah that's how we are seen and I think that's a bit uh there's a bit of truth in this like uh, French people always complaining always uh, 
but but also in a nice way you know always fighting for like mm. going in the street to uh to uh you know go go on, on strike and uh, and yeah and yelling about things uh, i think we're known <laughs> for this okay yeah because you don't seem that way at all and that's what um, i know i'm not like this yeah <laughs> I'm more so the that... chill the chill side of friends but that's what's so interesting, like what strikes me about your music is when I listen, because I listen to a lot of music, but when I hear your music, I, I hear like the emotion from the music in your voice and the guitar playing. And it's not mechanical, not not to say that you're not technically sound. I'm sure you are. But how do you get the emotion out from your soul into the music? Because that's got to be the heart, one of the hardest things to be a good musician. Yeah, I think it's coming more and more with time because for the for example, during the recording of uh, my first album in, in 20 uh, we recorded this in 2016. For me, it wasn't natural at all. I was kind of uh, more introverted and uh, playing what I had in mind, but not really putting my emotions and my soul in, in, in my music. Maybe because I wasn't ready, maybe because I was scared of the comments of a lot of things. But I think letting go is a part of the process. Along the way, you become, you become more yourself and it feels easier to play what you have in mind. And at the moment, I feel very, uh, I'm very free with this. I'm I'm really uh, liberated and it feels really great. So I, I think it's when you feel good with yourself, it's easy to put yourself in your emotions in your music. Hmm. So it just took time because, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Because like, when you started, when you made the decision to post on YouTube and this was in, uh, like we said, 2008. So this is before mm -hmm. every kid had a TikTok and like not a yeah. lot of people were posting uh, was that a, how did you come to that decision? Were you worried at all? Because so many teenagers at that age are so self-conscious. I mean, yeah. you must have eventually, uh, you know, you got used to it, but at the, the beginning, it must've been scary to get some negative comments and things. how did you handle mm -hmm. that? I don't think so. Because at the time, like you said, there weren't a lot of platforms uh, to advertise your music and, and post videos. YouTube was kind of the only one. And it was also kind of starting. I think maybe it was created two years before this, it was still new. Um, so for me, I don't know, it was the beginning of all of this. And uh, there weren't a lot of people posting uh, um, guitar covers uh, on YouTube. So I wasn't expecting anything. I think I, I was just uh, used to spend uh, spending a lot of time watching other YouTubers uh, covering classic rock solos. And I thought, ah, I really want to play like him. And and uh, this is going to be a challenge, mostly for myself. And uh, I felt really comfortable at home, you know, staying at home, uh, no stress, just recording my my covers. And when I was ready, just uploading them. And I was really curious and excited about the comments. And um, yeah, so I had no plan in mind. Not, nothing was really planned. I wasn't expecting anything. And I think I was, uh, yeah, lucky with the timing. Uh, I worked hard too. And uh, yeah. Uh, it was a combination of things that made this work. And I'm really, really happy about this now. Right. So eventually, I mean, or, or probably at the beginning, I mean, there's probably a lot, there was comments though, right? Where like, I'm assuming most of them were positive, but yeah. there was some negative ones. Did you just brush those off? Cause I think for me, like age 18, if someone's making like a comment like that, I mean, it could be kind of devastating at such a young no, age. Because it was the internet and I, I thought, okay, people are just hiding behind names on the internet they can comment whatever they want because this is a kind of uh yeah uh we, they're not sh showing their faces and it's easy to to insult or uh, but like you said most of the comments were really positive so i was focusing on this and every time there was a like a negative comment either it was very constructive and it was okay or hmm. not and then i just erased this uh, out of my mind you know it was a hmm. it was just uh, moving on and it's okay so because i think when you when you're uploading your videos on the internet, you have to detach yourself a bit and not uh, take everything seriously. Otherwise, you're you're becoming crazy. Yeah. So was like was it a slow process then with growing it, or was it one of the first videos? Did it blow up? Um, I think uh, that it was n uh, um, neither of them. I think I none of them. I think it was a um, like a. Quick process, I would say. Not a slow process, not a big hmm. blow up, but like a, it, it went uh, kind of uh, fast, uh, but uh, over maybe the first years and I was just going like this mm. and for, for years and uh, I didn't really keep track of this. But yeah, after a few, a few videos, I already had a, 
several million views. So I was, uh, yeah, I, but I, I never really realized this. It's it's hard to, uh, I don't know, for me, it's just the internet and numbers on the internet. So it's not really the, the real life, but of course it's motivating when you get a lot of views and, and uh, uh, like uh, positive uh, answers and uh, comments, it motivates you to continue and, uh, and, um, and yeah, uh, challenge you to uh, keep on posting and do better and better. So yeah, millions nice of, yeah, millions of views. I was going to ask you too, um, cause when you started playing guitar at 14, it was your dad that kind of info, he was playing like a lot of classic rock and country, like on the stereo or whatever. And you're yeah. like, I want to play that riff, but how did he get into that kind of music? Cause he was, he was listening to like a lot of, it seemed like American, like Southern rock and he's English. Yeah. So how did he, yes. he just randomly like that music or did he have some sort of tie to that or? I have no idea. I think in the in in England, maybe they're more anchored to the rock and the country culture. So hmm. that's why. In in France, I uh, I don't think I would have. Uh, I'm not sure I would have listened to this exact type of music because in France you have rock, but the country is not really popular. It's uh, like a bit uh, not really well seen. It's a uh, uh, but yeah. In, uh, if I if I had been raised by two French parents, I think I would have my maybe my musical taste would would have been different. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think uh, I had the chance to have this uh, um, wide uh, musical uh, education, and uh, this uh, helped me start it. I think start. Yeah. So how was that? Um, so that, then you must have been kind of an outcast in a way in high school. Uh, listening to this music did you have any friends that uh, shared similar music tastes like did you wear the band shirts to school and people didn't know what it was and things or uh no because i think i really be became interested in uh, playing rock music when i was uh around 14 and i i made some friends that were who were into rock music as well but more you know the punk rock or teenage rock uh rock bands like uh Fall Out Boy, uh, Nickelback, The Offspring, Green Day. I think when I was around 14, that's that's what I was listening with my friends because at least we could talk about the guitar, maybe not country music. But uh, at this time, yes, I, I discovered new bands with my friends, uh, The Guns N' Roses. And uh, I think I uh, I got uh, yeah really uh, interested in uh, knowing more about classic rock. So, uh, yeah, we created a, a cool uh, circle of friends. Uh, and, um, and, yeah, I started playing guitar yeah, around... Uh, this age around 14 i think so was it all, only um mostly by yourself in the youtube videos or did you have like little side projects like actual bands where you played with a drummer and a bass player in high school uh no 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 i so i started playing guitar around 14 i took lessons with a with a teacher and um it took me a while before um wanting to create a, a project i think uh, it, it's a really long time but uh i started playing guitar and then for the First uh, eight years of playing guitars, I was uh, playing guitar. I was just uh, covering solos, uh, learning solos, and uh, just covering on YouTube. And for me, that was enough. That's that's what I wanted. Maybe because I was a bit introverted, and I I just felt comfortable. Um, yeah, recording solos and covering solos in my bedroom and posting on YouTube. Um, and it was after eight years of practice that I finally decided to. Uh, share this with real people you know so and um, i don't know maybe i i I, I was lacking this i think it, it's important when you start playing guitar to um share this with people and play with uh, with your friends and be uh, uh, get on stage as soon as possible because after eight years of playing guitar my first uh, stage was a bit uh <laughs> scary because i already had uh, several million views on youtube and I never uh, tried I had a stage experience before, so my my first uh, stage ex live experience was with my my uh, current project. <laughs> uh, yeah, after gathering millions of views on YouTube, so I I had a bit of pressure on me, you know. So how did you get to that point? So um, you know, you're on YouTube, uh, millions of views, and then you get to be on stage. Did you form the band? by yourself or did a record company come in to help uh help you get the musicians no so we found the um, the record company later but uh yeah around uh maybe i was around 20 uh yeah 2022 23 uh so yeah i just met friends i, I met the right people i started oh. the band with my 
my uh, my friend Mathieu, and then we we started looking for other uh, bandmates. But at the time, we didn't have any contact. So we just posted ads on the internet, you know, searching for uh, a drummer, searching for a bass player. And then it took time, but we um, we gathered a, a good team. And um, and yeah, and I've been uh, I've been playing in this band. Uh, we've been touring a lot since the release of my first album in 2017. Um, and yeah, so this is a really di- uh, different world from the YouTube, uh, YouTube world. It's really, it's so, so different. But it, this is nice too. So this is the same, all the same band members. Have, have anyone ch- has anyone changed? Uh, yeah, along the way, it changed. Uh, we started as a band. Now, now it's more a solo project. Uh, I decided that, uh, yeah, now I'm kind of turning a page, going in another direction. Uh, recently, we decided we decided to hire a keyboard player for the band because I thought this would had this could add a new texture and a new new tones to our rock music. We started doing doing this, um, um, including a keyboard player uh, during the last uh, recording session for the new album that's uh, going to be released in uh, two months. Um, so yeah, we are taking a, a new turn, and I'm I don't know I want to try new things. So yeah, the the project evolved a bit uh, with um, along the years, and uh, yeah, well I I don't know I feel like uh, now I'm ready to. Uh, take a new turn, try new things, be the only guitarist in the project. I think it's a real challenge for me because uh, right now it's the first time it's it's uh, it happened to me. I was always used to uh, playing with another guitarist and now I'm the only one, um, only guitarist on stage. So I don't know, It's it, it feels really, really different. I have a, I cannot hide behind anyone else. If I'm screwing up, I'm screwing up. If you hear a, a wrong note on the guitar, it's gonna be me. I cannot say it's someone else. So yeah, in, in the end, I think it's a uh, it's going to make me stronger. I hope so. Yeah. Well, that yeah, no, that sounds. I think it will. So with the keyboard player, did you? How does that work for live shows? I always wonder that, like with Guns and Roses, because they added a keyboard player after Appetite. And then they had Dizzy Reed for, you know, Use Your Illusions, which, okay, he plays on a lot of those songs. But then what does he do during the Appetite songs? Like, I always sometimes try to watch him. I'm like, is he just like banging a tambourine? Like, what do you do with the keyboard player if there's no keyboards on the song? Yeah, in the Guns N' Roses, I, I never really paid attention. But uh, for us, we just um, we just told him, okay, so we're removing a uh, rhythm guitar. Uh, I need you to, um, to play like a... Um, as if you were a guitar player, you know, uh, huh. just uh, if I'm going uh, on a solo, I want you to play the chords, to to have big, fat chords, to try to fill the space in your own way. It's going to sound different, of huh. course, but we kind of rearranged all the songs. Uh, so it doesn't sound so much different because in a lot, on a lot of songs, we were playing the same parts, you know, the two guitars were playing the same rhythm parts. It was um, often like this. So now there's only one guitar playing one part and the keyboard sometimes either is compensating for the lack of rhythm guitar or uh, is just um, adding new new parts and re- rearranging with a uh, with new uh, new licks you know and it also uh, it feels refreshing because we've been playing these songs for a while now and for us it, it feels like I'm a bit rediscovering my uh, my own songs and it feels good so I hope it's going to be the same for the people that are um, who are coming to see us on stage, you know? Yeah. I wonder like, could they, could the keyboard player like put a guitar sound on his keyboard and then play the chords on the piano and it would, he could almost do a rhythm guitar on his keyboard, right? For almost. some of the songs. Yeah. Because he could, he can make his tone a bit dirty, you know, like a, almost as yeah. if he was, he were play, he was playing with a, an overdrive pedal. So you can have a really dirty uh, rhythm bass. And uh, yeah, this, uh, this is cool. This sounds different. like a, a bit of a deep purple uh, kind of vibe, but uh, it's uh, it's interesting, and I, I like uh, I like what we're doing at the moment. That's cool. So you talked about how you started out just doing the solos and the covers. So eventually, you start writing songs. How did you learn to write songs? Was it just trial and error? Or did you like try to YouTube how to write a song, or do you get no, lessons? No, no. <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah, I kind of went with what. Uh, uh, felt natural you know started I'm always starting with a riff a guitar riff because uh, for me that's the easy part uh, and the the singing was always singing was always coming in the end uh, because for me the fun part was really the guitar part so always starting with the guitar part um, 
And uh, and then, yeah, it, fe it felt natural. Of course, at the beginning for the first album, I wasn't really sure about the style, the, di the direction I wanted to go to. So the first album was kind of a mix of everything I loved. Like you have one song that sounds a bit like a Leonard Skinner, one is a bit more ZZ Top, one is a bit more ACDC. So the first album, we were try trying a lot of different things. And I think I'm finally starting to find my way. So finally, third album. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, well, so with the music that you have out now, uh, the Hard Blue Shot, I think that's your most popular song on Spotify. It's over a million views. Yeah. Uh, obviously, great guitar work. Uh, what do you think it's about that song that resonates so well with people? I think it's just raw energy, you know, just a pure rock and roll plug and play. Um, it's easy to sing to. And uh, I think that's this. P people, uh, because I, I'm, I'm playing rock and roll for people who want to I just want people to have fun you know to uh, when they are coming to one of our shows when they're listening to our songs and I think with this song you can really feel the yeah the raw rock and roll energy and uh yeah you I don't know it can talk to a lot of people you uh I didn't want to talk about like a, a serious uh, topics uh, politics or anything because I know that there are a lot of bands that are doing this really well and this is not my this is not what I want to do with my music but um but yeah I think this song is a good mix of a uh, uh, guitar riffs uh, uh yeah well yeah so the, what does that lyric mean then it's like radio is dead tv is <laughs> shit come on just give it away what is that like you're saying give yeah, away it's like thinking about for example the music we have in France rock is uh, almost non-existent you know on, on TV, uh, on the radio, when they're saying it's rock, it's never really rock. It's rock mixed with uh, pop, mixed with electro, with, mixed with something. So <clears throat> I think that's why um, I felt the need to sing this because mostly in France, the rock scene is uh, yeah almost non-existent. It, it, it's a bit sad. So we wanted to yeah, talk about this in this song. Yeah, I was I was trying to Google that like French other French bit because that said I think in your bio like one of the biggest French rock artists and I was like oh yeah what are the other ones and I, I think the only one I found was Telephone is that a band yes. from France is that big Yeah, not yeah. sure they still exist. They were big uh, years ago. They were one of the yeah biggest rock uh, bands in Fra France, uh, but I don't think they still exist. Uh, yeah, we had some great bands, but. Uh, yeah, like I said, now rock is not so popular at the moment. Maybe it's going to come back, but I think rock was never a French thing. So so how did you cut your teeth? You said you talked about your first time on stage. Did you do a tour somewhere else then, or did you just do shows? You have to you just do shows in France anyways? Yeah, yeah. So we, we started building a, a fan base in France because I, I live here, so... So that was the most, uh, yeah, the the easiest uh, way to uh, practice and uh, and rehearse. And so we found um, a booker, and um, who managed to uh, yeah to to make us uh, play gigs almost every weekend uh, since uh, 2017. We've been on the road uh, uh, mm. almost nonstop. We weren't really going on tours, you know, like two or three months straight in a row. It was more okay every weekend. We're taking the van, taking the van, and going uh, to play some shows uh, everywhere in Europe. I would say now we we're playing, we're mostly playing in Europe. Um, but yeah, yeah, we so we start we started the band. The first shows happened around 2014, I think. We didn't have any albums at the time, and. Uh, I'm happy we evolved because these were really the the beginning of the band. And when I'm looking back, back, I'm not sure about the quality of the shows we were we were giving. Was it was it all covers then, or were you? No, no it was a mix. Uh, we okay. were playing a short uh, set list with a mix of uh, songs to be recorded and uh, and hmm. uh, and covers. Okay, so now you your third album, like you said, you're finding your way. Um, did you you said you played Hellfest? That was yes. a, was that one of the biggest shows you've done? Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, this was one of my dreams, and it finally happened uh, last June. Initially, uh, I, I've been told uh, I was going to play Hellfest. It was in 2019, but then the 2020 edition was canceled. 
then no 2021, and then finally 2022. So yeah, yeah this was this felt uh, surreal. Uh, it's when I'm thinking about this, it's like I'm I'm I uh, it was like an uh, an out of body experience, you know, like I was uh, watching somebody else do this uh, uh, in my place. But yeah, it was a uh, an incredible experience because I've been going to this festival as a music lover since 20, 2010 every almost every year so being on the other side this year it felt uh, i don't know like a uh, crazy but uh, like a really a uh, crazy experience but also feel uh, i also felt like i was home it was a uh, hmm. yeah hard to describe wow that's cool that's a, like i love hearing stories like that of people uh, achieving their dreams i think another dream you have is that you you want to play with Sheryl Crow and you've covered really some this. of her songs, right? So talk, talk about her. What, what is it about her that you love so much? I, I love her know. too, by the way. That, yeah, that's the thing, because when I'm talking about my two dreams, they have nothing to do to, together, you know, playing Hellfest, playing with Sheryl Crow. It's not compatible, I think. But yeah. uh, it's hard to explain why, but I, I've always uh, uh, loved her voice the tone of her voice the um, her style i mean the the kind of a uh, country but sometimes a bit pop sometimes a bit more folk sometimes i i, uh, I love her musicians on stage she's surrounded by incredible musicians and um i'm just uh, uh sad that she she's never playing in france if i if i want to see her live i have to go to the uk or to uh yeah to the uk last time i saw her but uh yeah she she's a legend for me I, it's hard to explain why uh i i'm just really touched by her music and i'm really uh admiring her, i think her it's work the... as a woman in the music industry i think yeah. she was one of the women who really uh i, I don't know uh, had a huge success in the u.s and uh really went uh big and uh, I, I'm, I'm sure she. It wasn't easy for her. She had to fight, but she she managed. And uh, she's a real role model, I think, for a lot of uh, women uh, out there. Absolutely, no. I think she started out as a backup singer for Michael Jackson, if yes. I'm not mistaken. But yeah. I don't know. And I don't know. Does she write her songs? Because I feel like that's one of the best parts about her is the songs that she has are such great songs. I mean, obviously the way she sings them too, but. It, yeah. The songwriting is amazing with the yeah. songs that she's put out. I, I think there are some songs that she mostly write, uh, writes everything by herself. I think uh, there are some songs that she's co-writing with uh, other people. But yeah, yeah, for sure, she's uh, writing uh, or her own song. And, and uh, I love this. Yeah. Love this yeah. Who else are you listening to now? I think I heard you say uh, Blackstone Cherry, Blackberry Smoke, Hailstorm. Tyler yeah. Bryant, who we had on the show. Um, anybody else that you want to? Yeah, exactly. I think I, I'm really happy that rock and roll is not dead. We have a lot of uh, great uh, new or more modern bands, uh, rock bands that are yeah still uh, alive and young. Like uh, like you said, Tyler Bryant and Blackstone Cherry. For me, when I started playing guitar, I was really uh, um, interested in the uh, guitar heroes and the classic rock bands and the big bands like uh, ACDC, the Guns N' Roses. But now I have to say I'm more um, inspired by uh, like Jared James Nichols and Rivers Sons. And uh, I, uh, this is more my type of music now. I, uh, I think that's uh, I, I'm paying less attention to the to the guitar hero uh, vibe and more uh, I'm paying more attention to the songwriting, for example. Are you a Muse fan? Do you like that's a little bit different, but I really like that band too. They're they're from I think they're from the UK. They're over yeah, there. No, I know. I I don't know why I, I I I don't like this band so much. No, that's but okay. I, I yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm I'm not listening to to Muse, but uh, I know they're they're on the radio everywhere, and that that's great uh, for them, and that's great for rock because at least we have some. Uh, they're on the radio in France, so at least if we oh, have really? a bit of rock, yeah, yeah, it's already. Mm -hmm. uh, a big step for us, but I'm, I'm not a, not a big fan. Yeah, no, I like rival sons too. And then, you know, Greta Van Fleet's kind of in that. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Same and what part, about, yeah. uh, do you like the struts? I think they're from the UK as yeah, well. Yeah. 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 Like a bit like the stones vibe and, uh, yeah. Queen, I, I, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I saw them uh, once or twice at the download festival in um, in Paris and, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, as a, like a kind of a modern, uh, recent young band, uh, they are, 
they yeah they're great they're motivating uh, uh, motivating i think uh, young musicians to get up and they have such a a good life energy i'm really admiring this uh this side yeah okay well let's talk about so you're you have a new single out now it's called uh one big mess it yes. sounds like a song about my life but no i i'm <laughs> kidding what, what is the song about uh so it's kind of a song that I, I uh, wrote uh, during the lockdown. So it's a bit about everything, like uh, uh, talking about someone who's uh, getting up every morning, every morning, he or she is realizing that uh, her life is the same. Uh, you don't really know what you're living for. You know that the um, the the world is going completely crazy. And yeah, it's kind of someone waking up and realizing all the problems in the world and uh, just wants to sing about this, you know. So, uh, yeah, and kind of uh, doing this in a fun way because I wanted a really uh, rock song and energetic and like a pure uh, rock and classic rock uh, energy. So, yes. No, I love it. That's great. That, that's such an easy. I, that's what I feel like, too. I feel like comedians must have it really easy right now, looking at all the craziness and just getting so much material. But I, yes. I didn't think of that, too. Like you, musicians, you guys can look at the craziness and be inspired by that as well to write great music. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I think uh, what's happening is a big source of inspiration <laughs> for everybody, every uh, all the kinds of uh, artists, you know, uh, writers and uh, actors and uh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, so and then the rest of the, this album, the third album, the, uh, the studio that you recorded in the ICP studios in Brussels, uh, yeah. you did you posted a video on your YouTube, which people should check out. I mean, wow, the studio looks so cool. Like, how did you even get any work done? Because there's like pinball machines and pool tables yeah. and a bar and you're eating, you get breakfast and yeah, but the label warned us, they said, uh, okay, uh, you're going to see, this is a, you're going to find a lot of vintage gear, but don't get lost because we only have two weeks. So you have to be working and, and not, uh, you cannot uh, lose a day trying uh, vintage gear, you know? So I, I knew where we were going. We couldn't really, uh, we, of course we had fun, but we still had to be focused on the, on the work we had to, to do. Um, and we already recorded the, um, the second album in this studio in the ICP. Oh. So, um, it felt natural for me to go back there uh, because it felt like home and comfortable. So for me, it was a bit reassuring to know where I was going with who I was going to work. Um, the Yeah, the, know how everything was going to, to go. For me, it was um, a, good, a good point. I'm not saying I'm going to record all my next albums in this studio because at some point I would like to change, to, uh, change the tones and uh, add new colors to the sound. Uh, but um, but yeah, this uh, experience in the ICP studio was a uh, was great and went even better than the previous ones. So. What is the history there? What because I saw you walking by and there's all these gold and platinum records on the walls. Which uh, bands have recorded there? It's a lot of French and Belgium bands because the so the studio is in Belgium in Brussels. Uh, so yeah, a lot a lot of uh, maybe for you it's not go going to ring any oh, okay. bell because. <laughs> So do you know that the band, uh, I think they're from the UK, Royal Royal Blood? Oh my God, I love yeah, Royal so they Blood. Re they recorded uh, one of their albums uh, there. But yeah. other than this, I think it's pretty much French and uh, oh, okay. Be Belgian people. So. Yeah, I love Royal Blood. Yeah, I saw them. They opened for Guns N' Roses. And then oh, yeah. I was in North Carolina uh, and randomly I saw that they were playing and I went and saw them. And they're amazing live. It's just two guys. I don't know how they do it. It's Have you ever seen them live? I, uh, I had my tickets to see them, I don't know, maybe six months ago in Paris, but they canceled because uh, there was a strike and their 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 van got uh, stuck on the highway uh, in uh, in France, not so far from Paris, but they couldn't move because the truck drivers was were on strikes and they were blocking all the highways. So the show was uh, canceled last minute. <laughs> so, oh, was that? Okay. They're, they're going to come back. And then I think they rescheduled the show. And then it was uh, canceled because of the uh, they had COVID or something. So oh, yeah, that's not canceled good. twice. I hope I, I get a chance to see them uh, maybe next yeah. year. Yeah, you'll like it. It's really good. Um, and then so your al your new album was mastered by uh, this guy's Ted Jensen. So he, this guy's worked with the Eagles and uh, Green Day, Nora Jones. How did you get him aboard? So thanks to the label, the the label said, okay, we we think he would. Uh, make a great work on your album if you what do you think and of course I wasn't going to say no because I, I saw <laughs> everything he did 
And yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we just uh, gave him the, the mixes. And uh, what's not really nice is that, uh, yeah, what we received uh, in return was uh, our music. So we can recognize our sound, but it just sound he made everything come to come come to life. It's like us, but bigger and uh, more clear, more crispy. It's uh, yeah, like our music, but more lively. So yeah, I, I really like his work. Okay, and so I, this is a question that I have to ask, but I don't even know like what I'm talking about. But with gear, because like making the sound. Is there some uh, favorite guitars or pieces of gear that you have? I don't know a lot about gear, but I know a lot of people listening probably want to mm. hear that. So the studio had a, a nice, of, a, a lot of uh, nice vintage gear, but I really wanted to play on my instruments because I feel really comfortable on my guitars. So for me, it was important to use the guitars that I'm using on stage in the studio. So I mostly used um, two or three uh, different guitars for this album. Uh, and mostly my Gibson Les Paul. So I have a, a Les Paul Classic, um, one of my main guitars that I, I used, a Gibson Les Paul Junior, which, which is a kind of a, like a traditional Les Paul, but simpler, like just one pickup, um, two knobs, uh, and uh, yeah, kind of more, sim more like a vintage tone, organic tone, and, uh, uh, like, and also... Um, less heavy than a traditional Les Paul, so I really like this. And um, a more kind of a Telecaster ty type guitar um, that I used uh, for a few songs on the rhythm parts. So mm -hmm. these were the three three guitars I mostly, mostly used for uh, the album. And for the amps, it was a mix of Orange and Marshall. I had a, a My Orange Rocker Verb 100 and then a Marshall Combo uh, 50 watts. And uh, that did the job. I, uh, it was mostly plug and play. Once I found uh, a fat crunch tone, I mostly kept this uh, tone for the all the album, and um, and put a few uh, extra overdrive uh, pedals for the for the solos. Oh, okay, I, I think Slash has a Gibson Les Paul, right? Yes, exactly. Is he uh, one of your favorite guitar players? Yeah, when I started, especially when I started the guitar, I was uh, he was my favorite. And uh, I was obsessed with his tone and really wanted a Les Paul because of him. So I think uh, my my first, um, yeah. Yeah, because that uh, was one video. of your first videos, right? The Sweet Child of Mine solo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, uh, at the time I had a small Epiphone slash signature that I still have and I still love. Uh, but now I have the Gibson Gibson version and I, I love it. So yeah, yeah, I, I think Slash got me into the, the Les Paul. Okay. Hi, what do you like doing better, uh, playing your original songs or playing covers? Uh, original songs. I think I started playing covers because I didn't know where else I could start. And I, when you when you start playing guitar, of course, you maybe you're not going to start writing songs uh, within the the first month. Mm -hmm. So, but now that I'm, uh, I have the chance to be uh, playing on stage my songs. Uh, yeah. Uh, if people are paying tickets to listen to my songs, I would rather play my songs than covers. You don't throw any covers in for fun, though? Just one or two? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you do? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, at the moment, what do we have? We used to play uh, ZZ Top, La Grange. We we had Foxy Lady at some point. We had Jumping Jack Flash. Um, at the moment, I, I think we removed all the covers, but... Uh, I would I, I, I would like to uh, put uh, one or two in the set again. I'm not sure which ones, but I'll, I'll think about this. But yeah, it's mostly when you buy a ticket to um, see us live. It's yeah. Yeah, well, you can and you make those songs, the covers your own. I, I think it's cool when bands too, when they find kind of a more obscure cover that's like like Guns N' Roses was the king of this. They made a lot in Metallica. Those two bands, I feel like they would find these songs that were so obscure and then people know yeah. them more from the cover version yeah, than yeah. the original because the bands they cover were like, nobody's mm -hmm. heard of those bands, but they know Guns N' Roses and Metallica. Yeah. 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 I agree. Uh, that That's for me, that's what, it, what's in interesting about playing covers is trying to make uh, the covers your own and trying to give something, I don't know, a different twist to the cover, something new, something uh, that that's going to make people, um, remember your version. Yeah. So. No, you totally did that because like I'm listening to your video and it's like uh, the one for rocket man, which is a song that oh, yeah. 
everybody knows that song. It's been covered a million times mm -hmm. and uh, you made it your own. And that's when I really like heard the emotion in your voice. And that was mm -hmm. a great one too. Um, yeah, I know you, you probably got to get going here. So uh, I always wrap up with a charity. Is there a charity that you want to promote here at the end? Um, I don't have any uh, particular name in mind, but something to fight for gender equality, like UN women or something, because I think it's still really important and there are, there's a lot uh, to be done in this uh, in this area. So, yeah, okay. this would be what I what I would be choosing. UN Women. I will put that link in yes. the website uh, or the, in the show notes along with your website and uh, people can follow you on social media and, of course, subscribe to your YouTube channel for some great content. Perfect. And the new album is called... What is the new album called? Do we have a name for it? Yeah, Head Above Water. Head Above Water. And what? when yes. does it come out? It's not out yet. Uh, so, no, it's going to be out in January, January 20. Okay, perfect. Yes. I'll look forward to that. Thanks so yeah. much, Laura. Thanks a lot. All right, bye-bye. Thank you for having you. me. Once again, Laura Cox Band. Check out the music on streaming or click the links uh, in the show notes for her website and get a physical copy of the albums. Uh, you can support both of us on social media and YouTube with likes, shares, and comments. And of course, subscribe to both our YouTube channels if you haven't already. I appreciate all your support with my show and my guests. Have a great day and shoot for the moon.